scripture, Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am? And that is so relevant, man, when he asked the disciples, who do they say that he is to them? That's where I want to start this premise at because too many of us have been indoctrinated with what other people say and who he is. Uh, we know Western civilization or Western culture really did, a, and the reason why I would say a lot of people don't like to be connected to the church uh, that they know as the church and what they've been given as the church is because the history of the Western Christianity and how they uh, uh, individualize Jesus to reflect themselves. Uh, they gave him a color that looks like them. And, and, and so, and then everything about even uh, the teachings was about really uplifting them and keeping them in a superior place and letting the people know that, uh, you know, those of darker skin, when you leave here, you're going to have this great big uh, a pie in the sky mansion and living a life of bliss. Why down here, they're suffering and just waiting on that one to come back and rescue them. And then also, uh, subconsciously looking at white folk as being that Jesus or the lineage of that Jesus that came and that's supposed to quote unquote uh, uh, be their savior. My journey uh, in my understanding, I grew up in, in you know, uh, the church. Uh, my mother and father was a part of the church. As a matter of fact, I'm pastoring the church now uh, that uh, we, I was my first introduction of, of, of God uh, the church, uh, and my mother is still there, you know, so that to talk about coming back around, but uh, I'm passing that church now. And even then, uh, it was as a child, it was interesting uh, to what I was exposed to. I, I seen uh, what people will call in the church miracles. Uh, I remember being five years old or somewhere around there and at the church service, my mother had a heart attack or she had a diabetic, uh, yeah, she went into a coma or she had a heart attack uh, in the church and they called the paramedics. And they literally uh, was taking my mother out because they couldn't get no pulse. And so like she was considered literally dead, uh, it, you know, and so they was taking her out still trying to revive her. And I remember uh, Reverend Allen uh, uh, coming and praying and, and like just putting hands on her and she jumped up out that gurney, you know, out, out of the thing. She lifted up, man. So for me, that experience, man, was just mind blowing as a little kid. So I was, How old I was, when that happened, huh? I was five, six years old. And you remember that you, yes, like that, that, that just stuck. Yes, sir. You. That's yeah. 60, yeah, yeah, six, uh, over on 604 Dixwell Avenue. That's where Christ Chapel used to be at. And right there, brother, I remember that vividly. Um, and, and, and so that there kind of just triggered something for me. But then the other flip side of that, I lived, I grew up in the projects out there in Brookside. And, you know, and, and, and after experiencing those things, even as a kid and growing up and, you know, mom and dad stuff and, you know, the arguments and, and, you know, the disagreements and all of that stuff, man. And, and remembering that incident and remembering the power of God or what they say was God, I, I chased that. And I would say, you know, Lord, if you don't give me nothing else in life, because, you know, they always taught God was up in the sky as a kid, you know, he, he's up there beyond the blue uh, uh, canopy. And I said, Lord, if you don't give me nothing else in life, just give me peace, not understanding what I was asking for. Even as a teenager growing up, dad left, like most young black men at 15 or whatever. But uh, fast forward, I never knew God in the sense of the Bible or what we call God in the sense of Bible. I got my real understanding of God and Christ through creation understanding and coming to a place in my thought that, you know, I don't know everything. That's where I'm at now. I'm learning. Uh, when I look at the, the, the trees and I look at creation, man couldn't create all of that. They, he duplicated that. When you look at the stars and the moon and the earth that we're standing on, man didn't create all of that. It came from somewhere. And because we don't know the beginning of that creation, that means that there's a supreme being. And in that supreme being, whoever that is, whatever it is, I'm striving towards understanding that each and every day. So when we talk about the Christ, I'm just fast forwarding. My understanding of, of Jesus, the Christ, 
this man called Jesus. I remember I didn't read it. I didn't understand it from a biblical basis because in the Bible, there's a lot of things. If you don't understand how to read that book, will confuse you and trap you in the book. Right. And you can can you give an example of a misconception? If you don't know how to read the Bible, a misconception of who Jesus is that people normally get or normally have. Well, normally they said Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. Um, what is God? When you understand God is a German word. Uh, and so when you say Jesus was God and that word God means supreme being, the embodiment of the total God that created the whole heavens and the earth and all creation in an individual, that's a misconception because Jesus never said that. He said, I and the father are one. He said that I am. That means that on the other side of that, there's something greater. Jesus never said he was greater than the father. He never said he was equal with the father ever. And that word father doesn't even mean an individual. That word father, when you look at the root word, it means source. It means the source. And back then in the Hebrew language and Greek, you got to understand those words meant something. Names were not just given just to give names. Those names described that name or that individual or that thing. And so that word father wasn't about a man. That word father was identifying as a source. So when Jesus said that I am the father of one or, or that, 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 I, that the father is greater than I, he's saying that there is no one like that individual or that thing mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be disrespectful to those religious individuals that are on the journey because we got to be sensitive and wise i'm not ignorant to the fact that i, I know my assignment so mm -hmm. the, I, i'm careful how i talk because i don't want because knowledge and truth could be more detrimental to those uh, that might be on the journey if you don't give it to them in the right way and so mm -hmm. I, i'm saying that you know intentionally so would you say then that when it comes to the way seeing Jesus as God, is that a limitation to your seeing, walk see, Christ? Was seeing Jesus as the God, the source of everything, yes, that is a limitation because then what are you grabbing for? Mm -hmm. What are you reaching for? The embodiment of this man that came to this earth that, that according to the scriptures got crucified or did all these particular miracles, then what greater is that? Mm -hmm. When you understand source, brother, what's keeping this earth spinning? What's keeping us continuous? And when you think about creation, when you think about matter of fact, me and you as a drop of blood, sperm in the egg. That came out of individuals, brother. Where did all of that come from? And you're telling me that this person was the embodiment of that creation? That would that would be disappointing. Mm. That would be disappointing to me because that means that we're limited, mm. opposed to believing in a limitless source that that we are to strive for. So I, I would say so. Now the scriptures do say that you know uh, when the Bible says "Ye are gods" in Psalms eighty. Two or somewhere around there. Oh, two, yeah. yeah, yeah, God's children of the most high God. Mm. The most high God. So, again, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, for conversational purposes, we put titles on things just for conversational purposes, but they're never the essence of that thing. Mm -hmm. There could never be the essence of it. It's to point to or give an understanding, especially when we're talking about spirituality, because spirituality is expressive. It's not I, It's not all the time factual or facts. Facts right. are a result of that. Expressions are a result of that. Mm -hmm. But you cannot put facts on something you can't see with your naked eye, brother. You mm -hmm. only can identify mm -hmm. what it may produce or what it may express. Psych psych psychiatrist, psychology, all of that is not based on being able to go in someone's head. It's based on the expression of that person and what's coming out of their head. Yeah. And so you're limited. Same thing with spirituality. You can't tell me that you're going to give me a conversational understanding of fact, finding, I mean, a fact about this great source and this power, this thing that we call God. You're going to give me the breakdown? Man, that's foolishness. Mm. You can't. 
However, we are the extension and expression of that. And so when you talk about Jesus the Christ, that word Christ means anointed one. Yeah, so let's, mean, let's, let, let, let's go into, so you got Jesus, uh -huh. the man. Yes, sir. And you got the Christ. Yes, sir. The scripture says, I believe in Isaiah, unto us, a child is born. That is Jesus, the man coming from the lineage of David. The scripture says that Jesus was from the root of Jesse. He was from the root of Jesse and the seed of David, according to the flesh. Now, how he got here, all of this immaculate conception, as a matter of fact, there was more than one a religious leader that came from an immaculate conception. If you read the book called 16 Crucified Saviors. Um, now, what, what do you say about those that might say, well, you can't you can't look at those. That's you know, that that's the devil. You know, you, you can't look at those other religions and. You know, what, like, what, what do you say to that when people who are Christian that or even if they're not Christian, but let's say they're Christian and they resist that very fact that these other religions had uh, uh, 16 other Jesus? What, what do you say to that? Well, I mean, again, they're coming from that Western culture. They're coming from that Western teaching that that if you don't if you don't know Jesus, your Lord said you're gonna go to hell, you're gonna burn in hell. There's a real all of that stuff there. That it was scare tactic. Uh, mm -hmm. But but the truth of the matter is they're afraid that you might persuade them to look in a different way because they don't really even believe most of them what they're saying. Mm -hmm. they're it really is. It's I, I'm not afraid to go and to read other books and understandings and get a different now because I'm solid in my Christ. Mm. I'm solid in my position, so it doesn't bother me to read the uh, the, the 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 Quran or or other you know teachings or uh, the the Torah and all of these other books or even uh, those of. Um, uh, 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 the Rastacrucians and all of them different other writings, and because you have many people, it's about a journey, brother. Jesus never identified himself in that Bible as a Christian. He never opened up his mouth and said he was a Christian. And it was the enemies of Jesus that called the followers of Jesus Christians because they was following him. And so again, why would we fight and make you embrace something that was given by enemies and you don't live the principle? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So now you could tell me you're a Christian, but you don't operate in the power or the principle of the Christ? No, nah, man, that's foolishness. And if you don't do it this way, come on, man, that don't even make sense. That's more Western bullyishness. That's yeah. a bully pit, not a pool pit. They bullied yeah. you. They bully that into people's mind. And so, no, man, you know, when you understand the scriptures and remember, we, according, you know, it's hidden in the book. It's, it's, it's hidden in plain sight if you understand how to read the book, not to not not allow the book to en en enslave you, but read it open minded, understanding the wisdom that's in that book. Go in there, understanding that it's about freedom, justice and equality. It's about you understanding your purpose and understanding your power and your authority. You are somebody. You have everything that you need. And if you read that book and understand that man, Jesus, that was born of the flesh, you were born of flesh also. The Bible said he came in the likeness of sinful flesh to mm. redeem man in the flesh, meaning that whatever way he got here, that immaculate conception, I don't even, there's no need to even talk about that. Because the purity of his of his being was not according to the flesh. The purity of his being was according to the spirit. God is a spirit, the Bible says. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, not in flesh. And this fleshly body is nothing but an earth suit to give the spirit man a, a way to exist in this realm. That's all. Beyond yeah. this. This flesh beyond the sky, brother, don't tell me you know all about that. Give me what you believe and allow me to make a choice of what I, you know, whether I embrace it or not. Don't tell me it is it. What, how, how do we separate? Because I know the scripture says that all word is God inspired or God breath, right? <laughs> At the same time, I also know that there is a human experience we have that we're not going to be able to escape, period. 
there, there's an expression of that human experience that'll show up in spaces where we might not even want that. For example, if we're doing, if we're walking in our purpose, if you're, if you're pastoring, that doesn't mean the human experience went away. If you're pastoring and you're speaking the word of God and you know you're being a conduit, that doesn't mean that if, uh, let's say, for example, you know, somebody's, I don't know, doing something inappropriate, something disrespectful. That doesn't mean that your human mind isn't going to somehow in your consciousness show up and be like, I don't like what they're doing right there. I'm not I'm not feeling it. Who is this dude? Right. Not sounding like God at all. So it's still in there. You're preaching, but the word of your human experience is still in there while the word of God is coming out your mouth, right? So when I say that, I say that because when we write, when we read the scriptures and you're, you're, you, you have this Bible that man is writing, how much would you say is also human man versus God inspired? Or is all of it God inspired, even if it came from human man. Is that why the scripture says that? Because I feel like we, I feel like somewhere in the Bible, like we're not looking at the fact that our human experience is showing up too. Our ego is showing up too. There's something I believe in the East, they call it the Maizan, which is balance. You gotta have balance. And it's within that balance, the expression and the strength and power comes through, brother. There could not be no spiritual experience in the earthly realm without the tension of humanity or of your humanness, brother. So it is in that that place of those two things, meaning that you got to make an, a, a decision what you will express. Remember, you know, the scripture says in the book of Isaiah, it says that I, God, form the light, I create the darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all of these things. The God, the creator of all exists. Why would he say he make peace and create evil? Because evil and peace and good and evil, that's why he told him not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because then you're going to be trying to live your life, good or bad. The scripture says that God made uh, some vessels for honor and dishonor. They're going to be expressional evil here in this earthly realm, but you have a decision to make how you will respond. And when it comes to the scripture that you call the Bible or the book, there was no book. In the beginning, brother, these are uh, Canaan. They were not together. They were not put together. These were books that were put together by those that was researching from, the, uh, you know, back in the day or whatever. And they gathered the books together and they called it the Bible. As a matter of fact, there's arguments among scholars and theologians that the book is not in its proper order. It's not it's synchronized. It's not in chronological order. So are we to be governed by people who, who grew up in arguments, who argued over whether the, there's three in one or whether there's just one in the Nazi creed, all of these things? No, sir. You are to go into this book, into life. And understand that there is something greater than to, in you. The reason the Bible was given, according to to, to, to those that, uh, uh, that 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 are theologians and those that study this book called Bible, because man lost his path. Now, once you become full and understand who you are, brother, now the Bible be, just becomes a reminder, a roadmap. It becomes something that you can extract from to help build up you in your every daily walk. The Bible never was meant for to be judging other people. It was to be an encouragement to you and not sometimes always literally read. So if you come to the place of Christ and peace, justice, equality, uh, uh, treating others with love and respect, brother, understanding that it's not just about you, but it's about your fellow human being that you respect and that you love life. Come on, man. You, you, you express it. As a matter of fact, Dr. King, who was a Christian, said Mahandas Gandhi, who was a, uh, um, uh, a Hindu, he said Mahandas Gandhi was the greatest example of Christ that he ever seen.
Now what but, you gonna do with that? <laughs> so so with that, with that being said, did Gandhi accept Jesus Christ as no, Lord and Savior and rose no, from the uh, and died and rose from the grave? No, sir, no, sir. But but, but doesn't the, scripture say that you that's what you have to confess with your mouth and your heart if you are to be saved? So was God what is an example of Christ but not saved? But what is salvation? You got to understand what salvation is. Salvation is just, again, let's let's talk about the assignment of Jesus. Jo mm -hmm. uh, John 17, I believe. Anytime y'all get a chance, those that are listening, go read it. That, I call that the proclamation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jesus says that the hour has come. Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world was. When you read Revelations and, and when it talks about, you know, uh, you know, man falling in the beginning of Genesis, then Revelation talks about, you know, give me a body and I'll go down and help man come back to himself. What was the purpose of Jesus? It was not for you to glorify him or to lift him up. He came to fix a problem and to show man that you are in the image and likeness of your creator. That was his assignment, period. Now, if the, the, Jesus even told them, the disciples, brother, they, they came to him in one of the passages of scripture and said, Master, there's a man down by the river that's casting out devils in your name. And they were upset at that because they were not a part of the, the group or the, the fold. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I have many disciples, not of this fold. It was not about them confessing with their mouth and believing in their heart, brother. That was a doctrinal teaching that Christians gave. And there's been arguments about that. But we, without the scriptures, without the book, are divine and we're spiritual. And if we come to the full consciousness of that, and that we're doing the works that can be identified somewhat that's in the book. Who are you who are not doing the work telling me that I'm not in the book or I'm not doing what I was created to do or I'm not in the image and likeness of God? We can't do that. Mm. You can't do that. That's, again, conversion is vanity. Conversion says I know something that you don't have. Brother, why not just live a life that's influential, that my love and the radiance of my being, that's expressive and the power and me understanding the strength and authority that I have that goes beyond man's limitations. And I show up and stuff start to happen. My light is so bright. My truth is so strong that people start to wake up from their sleep. You going to tell me that I got to open up my mouth and believe when I'm living the resurrection? That I'm living in the authority and the power? Are you kidding me? So was, uh, it, it, it sounds almost uh, like what you're saying is that you can't take the scripture literal and the confession with your mouth and your heart that Jesus was died and rose from the grave for my sins, that scripture is not supposed to be taken literal. It's supposed to be how you live your life. What? Well, you, you, you know, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Listen to me, right? But Jesus says, I, I, and I'm just talking, I've been, you've been hearing me quote mm -hmm. Jesus and the things that he said, brother. That's, and mm -hmm. I, I encourage everyone, go, you said you believe in Jesus, go read what Jesus said. Stop listening to other people's interpretation. Go read it for yourself in the book. There's wisdom and there's power in there. There's the ability for you to come out of your stuck place. Here it is. When you believe, brother, I, if you believe, it is not based on facts. If you believe, it says by faith, we believe. By faith, we believe. Faith is not what you see. Faith is what you believe to see according to this Christian doctrine. And, and uh, faith is not just a Christian thing. Faith is a universal thing, brother. Anyone, you could have faith to believe you're going to be the biggest drug dealer uh, in your community, man. And, 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 and that means that you're believing. You don't have it yet. You're striving towards it. And it happens. You use it in a negative way. But, you know, That's some people, some people will still always still come back to that one scripture that says if you 
confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and rose from the grave for your sins, you are saved. And what is saved, though? That. Brother, what is saved? People interpretation of saved. Saved just means that word sin. That word sin doesn't mean lying, stealing, and all that. That word sin means that you're off track. That's all it means. And when you're off track of truth, justice, equality, peace, love for mankind, you're going to lie, you're going to steal, you're going to hurt your brother, you're going to hurt your sister, you're going to hurt yourself. That's what that means. So if you believe that Jesus died and rose from the grave, but what grave did he rise from? Do we literally now listen? I'm, I, I'm not saying that it might not didn't happen. I'm not saying that he didn't walk on water. I, I'm not saying that it might didn't happen. But what good is that for me today? What would that do for me today, brother? If I just say I believe he rose and yet I'm still poor, broke, sick, hungry and out the door and I'm not exercising. Did it really help me? Mm. That's what I'm saying. It is a transformation of the mind. It is about understanding not the external Jesus, I mean the external Jesus, but understand the internal Christ. Because Jesus was, name, his name was not Jesus Christ. It was Jesus the Christ. And so Jesus in the physical body was born from the womb of a woman. He was in the womb for nine months like you was in nine months. Why? Because he was showing you what was in you. He said, greater works you do than I. Here's the resurrection. As you see me do, you can do also. That you come out of your dead state. Adam and Eve didn't die physically. They mm. died spiritually. They mm. died and separated themselves from walking in the authority. And when people really understand how to read the book and understand the death. When Paul says to die daily, it means die to your selfishness, die to your insecurity, die to your doubt, die to all of those things that hinder you from being the greatness that you are. That's what that means. And so it, it is foolishness for me. I, let me take that back. It makes no sense to me for me to teach you about a life after this life when you was designed and created to impact this life. My job is to show you the Christ in you, the hope of glory, the authority, the power, the ability for you to rise and to make a difference in a perverse and evil world, in a violent world, that you could be the light to this world. That's all in your book. It's all in what y'all call Bible. Everything about that, the purpose of Jesus was to bring man back to his consciousness that he can understand who he is reflective of God. That's what it is about. It's did, not about, go ahead. Did, did Jesus, did he die literally and rise from the dead? Listen to me very carefully, brother. Show that to me. And I'm not saying it didn't happen. But can't not one person, not one, I don't care who you are. You watching this right here, you show it to me. You give me the now, facts. Now, some people, now, now the, the, the response to that, as far as facts of Jesus Christ's resurrection, um, are eyewitness accounts. That, what eyewitness account? You still got to believe the everybody, eyewitness. Everybody in the Bible. You still got to believe the, the eyewitness. The power of Jesus to Christ, the power of your Christness is not in facts. It's in faith, sir. Hmm. So so if, you, if you're counting on, hello, Dalton Thomas. If you, he said Thomas was one that didn't believe it was Jesus that was raised from the dead. And so Jesus said, come and touch me, Thomas. It's me. You don't believe it. We have a lot of people that need facts. And I'm going to tell you right now, most of the people that need facts, they don't really become great. Because your greatness should, could, could, should never be contingent on, on fact. It should be on what you believe. And you inspire to accomplish those things, knowing that there's no limit to what you can do. But if, if, I, if I'm if i only moved and I'm only inspired about by accomplishments, what happens when nothing happens? You stop. 
And so Thomas needed to touch Jesus in order to believe. But the scripture even says Jesus didn't rebuke him, but he said, blessed is the man that believes and have not seen. Why would I teach you a Thomas doctrine when he says, blessed are those that believe and have not seen? All I need to do is I believe that he was raised from the dead. I believe that he resurrected and that same resurrecting power, that same spirit is in me too. That's all I need to do. So you don't, so you're saying when it comes to the resurrection of Jesus, that it's not necessarily about believing or even knowing literally that he rose from the grave, but it's about believing that his Christ consciousness rose from the grave. It was about, this is what, this is a, now Paul even says, and this is why I said I'm careful in my conversation in the book when Paul writes, he said, this is not the, the God saying, this is me saying it. This is a Johnism, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a Johnism. What purpose, what would it do for you? What, 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 what difference would it make for you? Even if you did see it, that means you need to see it something else. So you found out that he was really raised from the dead. And who brought you those facts? Was you there? No. That means you're still believing on what somebody else gives you, brother. Mm. I mean, I, whatever way you want to put it, you still got to believe what they give you, sir. And we've been believing the wrong people. What I'm saying, this journey is not about someone giving you information. It's about you being inspired by what you believe. That's why when Jesus said to them, who do man say that I am? They said, some say that you're John the Baptist. Some say you are one of the prophets of old. But then here's the key and the power question. Who do you say that I am? Mm. And when Peter said it, he said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Jesus says flesh and blood, meaning physical teachers, or it, those that came with information didn't reveal that to you, but your source did. The father in heaven gave you a visitation and let you see who I really am. And you are that also. That's what we're all supposed to be, sons of God. Not gender. In Christ, there's no male, no female, no bond, no free. When will we get this? And until we get this, we are stuck under Western doctrine and enslavement that will never make you powerful. Mm. There's no need. If you wasn't there, you can't tell me that, bro. And even if you was there, you can't bring me there. Should our life be based on what information passed down? Or should it be based on what we believe? Jesus said, as a man thinketh, so is he. David said, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The scripture says in, in, in the book of Hebrews, Abraham and them were those that were patriarchs of faith. It said that Abraham and them received the promise afar off, but they never attained it in this life. And they counted themselves as pilgrims in a strange land. Why? They were living out of the promise and saying that, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe it. Yes, I'm living from it now. I'm, I'm experiencing it now, though I never attained it in this life, man. It's about peace. It's about you being able to be motivated and strengthened by the place of your belief and never let no one deter you. That's what this is all about, man. It's not about getting caught up in religion. Religion is a pathway. It is not the. It is not it. It is not it, man. And we have been indoctrinated so much, brother, that we've given people the power to rule our thoughts and our mind. And this is why we're we're stuck, man. We got we're we're, we're stuck in such a cycle. And, I'm, and my job is to, like I, like you said in the beginning, to literally teach them out of the book that once they have a personal relationship and understand that they are created in the image and you are the extension of this God that you call 
You are the expression of this God, uh, this, this, this source, this power in this strength, in this earthly realm, man. You are amazing, boy, oh boy. You mm -hmm. are absolutely amazing. And you just don't know it. And so my job as a follower of Christ, remember in, in, in Life Center Ministries, we said we are followers of Christ hoping to earn the title of Christian. And so my, my mission as a follower of Christ, man, on this journey that I'm on and not knowing when my day of expiration will be in this earthly realm is to be a light. It's to be a light, to, to, to be able to inspire and to uplift and not in my Christness to argue or debate, but find ways that we are similar and be able to connect to my brother or my sister. No matter what, if it's about freedom, if it's about justice, if it's about equality, if it's about peace, if it's about love, if it's about brotherhood, togetherness, unity, I'm all for it. Mm. it. It is the opposite that we oppose. Not those that are on the same journey. A wino don't care the content in the bottle. Bottle, he just want to get drunk. We don't want to argue about different tastes of liquor and all that. They all do the same thing. Might do it quicker than others, man. Come on, man. We 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 got to understand that they, in the book of Micah it says that all of the people came unto the mountain of the Lord, representing their own God. Mm. Would you say then? I didn't even give no scripture content and I have it, but go ahead. I, I just don't want people to think I'm just talking off the top of my head. But you could definitely I, bring, yeah, you know, you could feel free to bring scripture. I, I wanted to know um, what do you say in this time that we're in now with astrology, numerology, you know, your with your understanding, with you being the pastor? Um, and I know the I know the scriptures speak to that. And my opinion is that the scriptures speak of those things as being used to replace sources guidance. I don't know if the scriptures speak to the complete demonization of those practices or that understanding of astrology and of numerology and things of that nature. What do you say to that in regards to being a pastor and even to other people who are finding their way spiritually. Um, do you speak down on those things? Do you, what, what are your thoughts on them? I, I don't, I, I, I say this uh, in, in, in my ignorance. I don't know much about astrology or any of those things, but I do know that all creation is from God. Um, and I, I don't, really, you know, again, I don't like to speak about things that I, I am not knowledgeable of, but my question would be, what do you want to see an astrologist for? And if you're going to that astrologist to get information that you yourself can get, then why don't you seek it out for yourself instead of giving that power, that power to those individuals? Same thing even with the church. Uh, you, you, you should never be coming to church to get information. You should be coming to church excuse me, to get confirmation because you are on your journey. So I, I don't want to give people that kind of power, brother. I, I mean, I want confirmation. And that's, I don't read for information. I read for confirmation. So I, I don't, I, I, when I go to church, anytime I went to church, I didn't go to, to hear someone. And I'm not saying nothing, you know, for people that don't know, they don't know. So there's some information given. But the same one that's giving you information can also stagnate you. Because then you give them that level of control. So mm. I say to anything, whether it's astrology, whether it's Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, whatever, you got to study to show thyself approved. Mm. You know, you got to study. You got to put some work to it. Because anytime you lend yourself to someone else's opinion and not saying that they're wrong, then you become captive to that. Mm. You become captive. So I don't want to say yay or nay to any of that stuff, brother, because, again, I'm not knowledgeable and I don't believe in speaking about things that I, I'm really not invested in, in the sense of being able to conversate about. Yeah. Uh, but I could say just from a, a, a plain perspective, you know, the, the source is the source. And yeah. what you do, there's only one power, yeah, one yeah. power. And what I you do with that power 
is mm-hmm. up to you. So I want to, I want to, and thank you for that. I want to just go back to us talking about the resurrection and the Christ and Jesus. Um, so when we think about people, you know, the true meaning behind the resurrection of Jesus, you know, the death and resurrection of Jesus, um, what is the true meaning? The true meaning that you refer to versus the meaning that other people see it as. I, I, I don't want to do versus this or that. I, okay. I want to say whatever it is that that person believes and how it works for them. And when Jesus said that, who do you say that I am? I like to keep it in that premise. What is that resurrection for you? Because if that resurrection and you say, I believe it actually happened, is not letting you walk in the power and authority, then you then you misunderstand the resurrection. Paul said that I might know him. A, a person in the grave don't know nothing. Jesus did according to the scripture. And I say that all the time. So I wish people would stop trying to say, uh, you know, this happened. No, what you should say, according to the scripture. This is what was said and accounted for. That's how you address these things. Not mm-hmm. saying this happened and that. No, sir. According to the scriptures, this is what was documented. That's how you say that so that you don't try to bring, and you could persuade people very easily. Remember, that's why I said no for yourself. But anyway, when you look at the, what was the purpose, number one, of Jesus coming? He came to redeem restore and to reconcile jesus went through the ultimate watch man according to scripture according to scripture adam died died spiritually he he didn't die physically go read your bible so what needs to be resurrected the spirit because the spirit's dead or it's dormant so is it about jesus coming up from the dead literally what would that what does that do for you spiritually or is it about you coming up out of your 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 dead state and resurrecting to the power and the authority of the image and likeness of god adam didn't die physically so why would jesus come and you gotta now uh be uh get facts about him being raised from a dead grave why would he, what purpose does that serve? This, I want to ask you a question, so I know you're the host, but what purpose would it be for Jesus to get up out of a, out of a, the, the, the breath left his body, okay? The, the, the breath that we breathe, and he's laying there dormant. So he gets up. So what does that do for you? So what it does for me, um, I think it strengthens my faith. I think it, I think, I think I, it almost brings me to, um, what's his, DeMar, DeMar Hill, the, the football player who collapsed. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yeah. So, so the football, the football player who collapsed, that was almost 10,000 people in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, you know, I think, I don't know how many fit in that stadium. But 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 then you had all the other people that were watching, and even on the news they prayed. I've never seen that before. They prayed to God on national TV, like no matter no nobody cared, cared about getting canceled. All in that one moment, for nine minutes, that that brother was dead. For nine minutes, no breath in his body, and then he recovered. If that doesn't speak to the power of prayer and faith. I don't know what else does. Okay. So when so, I think about when you ask me, what does it do for me to know that Jesus rose from the grave? Um, I think that's exactly what it does for me. It, it shows me that there's a man who took on a mission that within himself, he knew that this was a calling from God, took on a mission, a purpose, and was willing to be the example of what it looks like to die for that purpose. You know what I'm saying, cool. and 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 then show, and then also show the. See, it, it, here's the thing too, when I think about Jesus dying and rising and raising from uh, and and raising from the dead for our sins, that part I'm like, okay, raising from this, raising from the grave, definitely, you know, for for my faith, it's a strengthener for my faith for sure. If I could believe that that's true, 
I could know that that's a true reality. But if I was Jesus himself, I'd be like, look, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. But explain the raising from the grave part. Why, why am I doing that? <laughs> what what exactly is that? Like, how is that for the sense? I, that, well, that part well, I can, can say, I, I don't know. I don't know I what say, the literal sense would be. But can I say this, sir? Mm -hmm. The death, because there's a price that had to be paid. His death was necessary because you always had to have a sin offering. He became the sin offering. But His what life. was the raising from the grave part? Why? Why? It was did. That it had. Listen to what I'm saying. It was not for physical grandizement. Mm. Your flesh is nothing. It was about him dying. Uh, that he can pay that price. Now what resurrected and what should be resurrecting is you from your dead state. Then when he breathed out, you inhaled in. Now live and be the Christ. So, so essentially, when he rose from the grave in the Bible, according to scripture, when it said that they saw him and when they moved the stone, you know, I always look at moving the stone as something uh, we move the stones of our life and we see that we are no that once we move the stones, we rose. Uh you know, so I, I I read it in that way for myself. But according to the scripture, from what people say, you know, the eyewitness accounts is are that they actually saw him. So are we talking that they saw him metaphysically? Did they see him within did it come to their memory and say, oh, you know what? I'm thinking of, you know, just like if we had an ex or something and we think of our ex and they're almost right there. Like, is it something of that type of nature or? Well, listen, yeah. wait, 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 listen. So here's the death, right? Now here's the purpose. Here's the death. He had to pay a price. Remember what, what the miracle of Jesus was not how he got here. The miracle was he never uh, yielded to his temptation like mm. we did. Abraham and all of them didn't make it. None right. of them before Jesus made it. So here's a man that was able to refrain from anything of his flesh to do wrong against the source, against the mm. father, number one. Now watch, he dies. He gets crucified on the cross. Now, after he gets crucified, the Bible said he gives up the ghost. He gives out the breath. Now remember, he says this. In his journey, the Bible says God blinded the eyes of those disciples that they did not know who he was. And they were not to say anything because he did not want them to glorify in his resurrected physical state. Watch the journey. I got to get to the disciples. Okay. I got to get to the disciples. And, and, and now... And let them know, here's the next step. Watch this. He says, he says, when he gets, he says, expedient. He, well, first of all, let me go back. He said, there's many things I would tell you, but you could not bear them now. How be it? When the spirit, not the man, when the spirit of truth comes, it will lead and guide you into all truth and bring back remembrance everything I told you. Now watch. I got to go because if I don't go, you're going to glorify me in this resurrected body, which was never a part of, of what you were supposed to get amazed by. I'm coming to talk to my disciples and I'm come to give them instructions. That's why he told Mary, don't touch me because I have not yet ascended. Don't put your hands on me. Oh boy. See, and so the physical body of Jesus walking or making his way to his disciples was never supposed to be a resting place of our conversation and amazement. Mm -hmm. That resurrection was for me and you to rise up in Christ, not to look for him, but now you look from him. That you are now the Christ in you, the hope of glory, the resurrecting power of God. He fixed us. And we're still stuck on the fix. And we're supposed to move from the fix and now be the Christ, the expression of the Christ. They did not teach you that in Western teaching. 
They taught you all that other stuff. But if you go back and look at the teaching of Western <laughs> civilization, they do not talk about Christ in you, the hope of glory, when Jesus and everything else pointed right to that. So we, again, when you talk about Omar, I mean, the young man that died. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't die. He didn't die. Well, not die. But, 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 but he would have yeah. prayed the power yeah. of prayer. Mm -hmm. But and like I told you about my mother, they, they yeah. were taking her out. Yeah. Okay, okay, there's my Christ rising. Oh, I don't need nothing else. Mm. That, that mm. worked for me. But you got people, oh, I got to see another miracle. In order for me to believe, I can't. Well, you stuck then, bro. You stuck. Because if you always got to see some, God, the, the Bible says that the Pharisees and the religious people are looking at the signs. Always mm. need another sign to believe. Why not just believe? Why do you always have to have something in order for you to be encouraged to believe? Why don't you just make up in your mind and say, I believe and act on what you believe and live from what you believe? Because you're not going to always. The Bible says Jesus, he did many miracles to increase the faith of the disciples. But the scripture says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to a mountain and say, be removed and it shall be. Hmm. So how many of us, brother, I don't need to see another, what you call a miracle. I want to be everything I was purposed to be. And so don't teach me about a man that died 2000 years ago and rose from the grave when you, when he said to me, that the, the works that he did, I will be able to teach me that. Show me that. Don't keep taking me back in a time zone. He said I can do it. How do I operate that? Mm. How do I build upon that? Show me some method or something that I can start to really start to walk in that, that I can help others and impact other people's lives. I don't want to sit here and listen to you. Jesus never told them to talk about him. Show it to me in your book. Mm. He never said, talk about me. He said, teach them the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, the scripture says, is not in meat and drink, but the kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is in demonstration of power. Jesus said, teach the kingdom of God, the mm. power, the authority of God. And everything else will be added on, brother. Everything. He never, you show any of you scholars out there. Inbox, do whatever you need to do. Show me where Jesus told them to teach about him. Jesus told them to teach the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not in a distant place. But your Bible says the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is in demonstration of power. That's what he said, teach. Because if you teach people about a man that rose 2,000 years ago, you're going to get a stuck people. That's what you're going to get. Opposed to giving them the words and showing them how to live as he said we can live. Yeah. Pastor Lewis, thank you so much for sharing this 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 upload that you've gotten, brother. And I know you've been getting this upload for years. Yes. <laughs> and and um, we're gonna put the link to your church in the description. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you know, so people who are really interested in tapping in virtually, or if you want to attend uh, physically the address and the link to the uh to your church and to your uh streaming you know when you stream will be in the description of the video um brother is there anything else that you want to share with the people uh especially those that might be dealing with some church hurt yes sir um i i just want to encourage them that it's about a personal relationship the church is a is a place where people, sick people come and we're all being healed from things and traumas of our life. But it, 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 it's a place where you're going to run into those things. However, don't allow that hurt to keep you from finding another place. And number the first of it, first of all, having a relationship with God. The church is not God. 
And so find that relationship with God. The Bible said, go into your secret closet and shut the door. And you have that personal one-on-one -on -one with God and that conversation with the way you know how to. And, and, and I do believe that, again, you will get back into the fellowship with the other brothers and sisters and you won't lean on them as much as some of us have. We put too much stock in people. So don't allow church hurt to keep you from the fellowship. The Bible said, forsake not the fellowship of the brother. Why? Because we strengthen one another as we're on this journey called life. I say amen. Yes, hey, sir. brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Upload from Soul. Peace. Peace.